on the road again. Just can't wait to get back on the road again. Gonna walk down and see the goats again. Cause I can't wait to shit talk D and D again. What's up, nerds? It's your boy, the OG GM, walking to that magic store that will give us paint because this repainting the bathroom project is taking way longer and way more in depth than I thought it was gonna take. Paint, who knew? So when we do these walks, we, we like to get on here on our, our video phone and show you guys the uh, outside. Maybe we'll see some Halloween decorations. And of course, we'll visit the goats and, you know, talk about some aspect of this silly hobby. Usually, you know, it ends up me being a hypocrite, bad-mouthing other people for doing the exact same thing I'm doing. Because <laughs> I'm a worthless shell. All right. So today, let's make a video that I know people will farm and then shit talk and then say, oh no, I never farmed your video. Let's do some DM advice. In fact, let's go, let's go all the way back to the beginning. I'm just starting out. What's the best advice you can give a beginning DM? Other than don't, don't, just, just don't DM. If you're thinking, don't. Cause DMing is hard. Being a game master is hard. It's exhausting. It is, it is just a drudge sometime. Trust me, I've been doing this for what, 40 some odd years. It's exhausting. But then there's the moments that make it worthwhile where you forget the hours of work and research and drawing and writing and creating you put into your three hour story that you were going to tell this week only to have it destroyed because your players decided they wanted to go to the donut shop instead. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Now I'm probably not the best person to be giving DM advice. <laughs> You can look at some of the horror stories about my DMing experiences, but uh, I could generally break it down to you know, what I've been told. And, you know, for the longest time, the best DM advice I ever got that I tried to share with others is start small. Just just start small. Don't, don't try and run the Lord of the Rings on your first day out. Start small, you know? Just create the world that is going to be interesting to the players, whether it be, you know, one block, one mile, one hex, whatever. What's going to be able for you to tell a story that is simple, easy, uh, you know, can easily fit in a three hour spot, is, in, you know, adaptable with depending on from whether you have two players or 20 players and it's small, start small. Run Dungeons was another bit of DM advice that somebody gave me, you know, just run dungeons for like a year if you're just starting out. Don't really have an established campaign world or an over our story arc. Just, you know, run, run, run DCC funnels, run small one, two playthrough adventures, have multiple characters for multiple little teeny stories that have a beginning, middle and end. You can, you can tell over a week, month, whatever. Well, another bit, you know, another bit of great advice you give starting DMs. Just, just you know, the, the stuff's already been done. You got 50 some odd years worth of pre written product. Just run dungeons, just run modules, just run short little adventures. Don't, you know, write an epic story yet. Just run teeth, get, get, get your teeth wet, you know, pick up your skills, find your DM voice, and then. If it's something you still want to do after a couple months, then you can start making that bigger epic story that has been festering in the back of your brain since the 80s or whatever. So that's that's some good advice, right? Be prepared. Read the rules. That's another one. That's another one. That's one that expert, you know, people who claim they have years of experience still make the mistake of not being prepared, not having read the rules, not having prepared for um, what the players might do, especially with the advent of the VTT technology, you would hope that they would go in ahead of time and set up all the slides and all the things for the VTT. So when the game starts going, you don't have to break it down every 10 minutes 
while he the dam clunkily removes the scene you're in and then clunkily inserts the new scene and then everybody has to update their browser so they can all see the new scene now you would hope that the guy had everything set up ahead of time but yeah sure just be prepared read the rules more than once read the adventure get a get a good understanding of what could possibly spiral the possible directions the, the module might go you know read it as if you were going through it as a player you know like okay what would i do in room 3b all right what are my players doing room 3b so yeah be prepared that's another good one right that's, that's good starter dm advice i think you know but better than be prepared is probably be prepared for things to go wrong and give yourself the permission to let them. Right? That's one I don't think we hear these so-called expert DMs give enough, okay? Nine out of 10 times, guys, let's face it, whatever you had planned probably is not what's gonna be what's gonna happen to the table. And now, uh, you know, and then there's at least a 30% chance per session that one or more of your players will do something so completely out of left field that you're just like, uh, uh, what? I don't know. I, there's nothing. What should I do? And the worst thing to happen to that when that happens is, of course, to get in the pissing contest with the players, the headbutting, the getting yourself locked into the idea that the adventure has to play out a specific way and when they're going the, a different direction you want to fight them to go back the way the adventure's supposed to go and the more the two of you fight the less likely it's actually going to get to where you want them to go because the minute you start fighting against them we have this unconscious desire to of course rebel oh you're telling me what to do and how to play and what direction but to go well i'm not going to do that yeah because we forget to give ourselves permission. And I've talked about this hundreds of times before, guys. If we give yourself permission to wing it, give yourself permission to let things go wrong, give yourself permission to see where they're going with whatever you know path they've chosen. Hi, are you bringing me a present? <laughs> Thank you. With whatever chance, whatever path they've chosen to take. And maybe you can trick them to getting back on something that resembles a plot. I remember having a conversation with a guy a while back, I mean, at least four or five years ago, about he, how he was running a module. Um, he was running Out of the Abyss, and I had rushed, was starting to run it, and how during his run through of Out of the Abyss, the players went in such a bizarre left field that in no way, shape, or form connected in any way with the story of Out of the Abyss that he just sort of was like left flabbergasted, you know, he's like, I, I, I don't, uh, I don't know what to do, but he ran with it. You know, he said, well, he gave himself the permission to run with it. He gave himself the permission to see where they're going and see if he could find ways to get them back into the module. And the, uh, the sidetrack, he said, ended up taking almost four months of weekly play of this, you know, the him just basically making stuff up and trying to stay ahead of them and, you know, randomly generating things and just telling the story that they were interested in, interacting with them and seeing the way they wanted to go before he was able to even get them closely back on track to the story of Out of the Abyss and back into the planned encounters. And, you know, whenever there was a planned encounter from Out of the Abyss that he thought would be cool, and sort of fit the overall timeline of Out of the Abyss, he would just fit it in, you know, with whatever else they were doing, which is something I highly recommend and talk about all the time. You know, since nobody at the table had ever read or played through Out of the Abyss before, they didn't know if this was an, a, a scenario from Out of the Abyss or something he made up or something from another adventure or whatever. So, you know, in the back of his mind, he's keeping, the, he's keeping up with the story and timeline of Out of the Abyss. He knows generally when the events are supposed to happen. He knows how long they've been on the sidetrack and the, si the sidetrack that ended up lasting four months before he was finally able to get them back. And then he was able to tell the story, continuing the story about the abyss. But now based upon the fact that, you know, 
so much time had passed that events had already taken place, certain things that maybe the player characters could have directed to go one way happened and ended up going a different way. So now they've got to deal with the uh, outcome of their choice to go on the side quest and their choice to come back. And, you know, he eventually got them to where he wanted them to go and he eventually got them to the encounter with Jubilex and all the other stuff. But he did it in an original, unique way because he gave himself permission to make shit up. He gave himself permission to fail. He gave himself permission to let the players go off on an unusual track and ended up, you know, with a four hour, four month long story that had nothing really to do with the story of Out of the Abyss. So there, there's some great starter DM advice, right? Run modules. The work's already been done for you. So just run it, learn it, read it, go through it, change it up if it feels like they, you know, if you've got two players who've already been through Minds of Fendelver and you're running Minds of Fendelver, change it up. So they don't know what's going on, you know? Move a few things around. Let's move what's in room three to room five, you know? Find another haunted mine module, because there's probably tons and mash it with your Minds of Findelver. So there's a couple things in there. They had no idea what was coming. Keep them surprised, you know? Run those modules. You've got 45 years of backlog of modules, plenty of which are free that you could easily just fit in for like a year of one, two, three, four game scenarios. And maybe one of them catches on and that becomes the four month long, two year long campaign that you run. And when I'm running those modules, running those adventures, whether you wrote it or you're using somebody else's, give yourself that permission to let go, to not get locked in, that they have to go here and they have to get that and they have to do this to tell the story of the module. No, no, that's that's probably the biggest mistake. Is there... Right, guys? Right, lizard? You're gonna, that's probably the beginner, b biggest beginner's mistake that still experts, people who've been you know, doing this for decades still make. They get locked in to a specific idea of the way things are supposed to play out. And when it doesn't happen that way, they, they falter, they table flip. So yeah, give yourself permission that if you're running Tomb of Annihilation or if you're running Palace of the Vampire Queen or whatever adventure you're running, to let things go in an unplanned direction, to let them tell a different story than you had planned, you know? Because you could always trick them to get back on track, or you could find that the story they're telling now and the stuff you're generating now is way more interesting than anything you had planned, and you just run with it. And next thing you know, you're having a giant fight with a bunch of big, beefy mix for three weeks straight, right? It's so the best advice I could give a starter DM, a beginning DM, is find your own voice, right? Just, just give yourself permission to try, give yourself permission to fail, listen to other YouTubers, whether it be, you know, me or anybody else or DM Bloodworth or Shoner or Condor or uh, Max or James. But none of us are the end-all be-all. So take what you like from what people like me say and toss away the stuff you don't like. Find your own voice. The way I DM my is going to be completely different than the way you DM and the way that guy DMs and the way that girl DMs. We're all going to DM differently. And our players are all going to react differently. So none of us really know the right way. Anybody who says they do is just BSing you. My way, blah, blah, blah. My game, blah, blah, blah. Years of experience, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, those guys don't know what they're talking about. Your experience, yeah, no, doesn't, you know, doesn't matter. Find your own voice, DM. Starter DM. Play around, experiment. Give yourself that permission to mess up. Give yourself permission to experiment. Give yourself permission to let the players run with it. Do that for a year. 
And then, if you're still lucky enough to have two or three players who are still invested in the stories you want to tell, get together with them and go, okay, where do you guys want to do now for the next year, for the next two years, for the next four years, for the next 40 years? Free shoes. No, Halloween direction's weird, right? I guess that's, I mean, you know, if there's a best advice I could give you that's going to piss off the most people from me posting this video, that's probably it, right? One, don't listen to us. We don't know what we're talking about. Two, experiment. Find your own voice. Give yourself a year of just playing with the tools in the toolbox to see what works for you, right? That's, that's probably the best advice I can give you guys. So that's my DM tips for the day going back to square one for how what advice can I give a starting DM if you appreciate this nonsense give us a subscribe maybe check out my merch and if you don't appreciate this nonsense that's cool too just still have a great day now it's time for goats